Alright, hello and welcome back to section 4. And in this section we are going to focus on creating the animations. And personally I think this is the best part. It's, it's probably the most exciting one so far. And um, it's really fun to make them and, and see the results after. Um, and yeah, the first thing that we want to change is the workspace because this workspace currently isn't isn't the best for animation there's not you know we need some more windows we need some more tools uh, and things like that so what we want to do is we want to uh, go to the preset up here the animation preset I click on that and this is going to open up like the default kind of blender animation setup and this is a really good base but Personally, I prefer having a little a little bit more windows. So having like a few different views and like the, the graph editor and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this a bit. And we can actually add new windows by by dragging here. So there's like a little little thing here you can grab. And um, it might be a bit hard to see, but it's like a little like a little thing <laughs> that you can grab and you can just Oh, that's okay. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's just create a new one and try from here. Okay, and we can just drag them down to create new windows like this. And okay. And this is going to be the window that we we use for um, you know rotating around the model and uh, selecting bones, all that, all of that. And um, and this is gonna, the top window here. I usually use this for like the actual animation view, like what the player is going to see, kind of. Can make that a bit smaller. Um, so this top view is usually. Uh, from the first person camera, right? So I make this this into the top view. And we can actually do this by by selecting this viewport by clicking in it and then pressing uh, the zero numpad. And that's actually going to focus the camera uh, on the camera. So it creates this little nice window here where you can actually see uh, from the camera view, which is very useful. And we can actually hide these this top part here so we can select uh, right click here and disable show header so we just have like a nice clean camera and let's go ahead and drag this down as well make it a bit smaller and we do want to keep this one the timeline but we could put it up here instead like so and like that and I usually keep this one the left window left bottom left this is usually my uh, the action editor it's called and this is where we're gonna be adding new animations this is where we can uh, modify keyframes we can move keyframes uh, we can also select animations from this list here so this is very useful to, to keep here and then at the top, I usually have the uh, graph editor, which is the curves, uh, the animation curves for the keyframes. And we're going to get into that a bit later, but for now, uh, let's just keep it like this. So the graph editor in the top left and the action editor or the it's, it's called the dope sheet here. So it's a, it's dope sheet and then action editor here. And then the bottom one is the timeline, which gives us this, you can kind of scrub through it and, and play and stuff like that. And then the bottom right is the 3D viewport. And the, the top right is just the camera. Let's make these a bit smaller maybe. And um, 
depending on your screen size like if, if you have a larger screen like this this is uh, 1440p so it's pretty large you, you can it's it's totally fine to have like four different screens on one screen but if you have like a smaller screen like 10, 1080p for example then you might want to keep some of these on like an external monitor like if you have an extra screen or something like that it would probably be better to keep the curves on a different screen and then like the main main animation uh, windows on one screen so they're a bit bigger uh, yeah so now we have a nice uh, nice setup going here there is another thing that we should add and that is some motion reference and what I mean by motion reference is that we can add some cubes like in front of the camera we can add some cubes and that's gonna be really helpful when animating because we can actually get some sort of sense of uh, space so if we for example animate the camera we we don't really know <clears throat> how much is moving or how, how it looks like in a in a 3d space kind of because now if we select the camera here and just move it I mean we can't really tell too much what's going on right why isn't the camera showing hmm Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some cubes. So make sure that the cursor is centered. And then press Shift A and add a cube. Let's just drag it out and place it in front here. And we can scale it down a bit. And let's go ahead and apply the, the scale. And let's copy this cube. Let's duplicate it, press X, and hold down Control. And let's just move it 10 units uh, to the left. And then repeat the process. Duplicate and press X. Hold down Control and move it 10 units to the right. And then select all three cubes. and press shift D and Z and hold down control. Move them up like that. And the same thing for these ones. So move them down instead. So we get like this, uh, kind of like a, well, a square, really. <laughs> a square of squares. And um, we can move them back, make them a bit smaller too. They, they shouldn't really be like overwhelming. They should just be like a reference point. You shouldn't really pay too much attention to them um, so you, you can think of them as more like a, yeah, just like a reference really and I can place them around here and let's make a different um, folder or a different co collection for these so with the cube selected press M and uh, new collection and let's call this one uh, motion reference and hit ok and we can actually disable the, the selection for this one so if we go here and enable the uh, selection tool and we can just disable this one so we, we like these are just like uh, static objects now we can't really select them at all which is good because they're just for reference, we don't need to actually interact with them. All right, and let's also go back here and do the same for the gun and the arms, because we don't want to ac accidentally select a gun model, because we're not going to be modifying the models, we're going to be modifying the rig. So let's go ahead and select the arms and uh, disable selection here and do the same for the gun model as well so disable selection so now if we try to select it we can't so it's only the rigs that are actually selectable now which is good 
and we can we can also uh, lock uh, lock the rigs like the rig object itself. So if we if we're in object mode and select the rig, uh, we shouldn't be able to move it at all or rotate it because it could give some pretty weird issues like this, or if you scale it or you know stuff like that. Um, because usually you can kind of move it by accident sometimes if you like click and drag it like this or. So it's it's better to just keep them locked. Uh, so you just select it in object mode, go to object properties, and then just enable the, the lock. And do the same for the, the gun. Like this, so now we, now we can't actually move them. All right, and uh, that's all for this setup. We can also, actually we can also disable this one. There we go. Much cleaner. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's all for this setup. Um, now it's just yeah ready to start animating and uh, start working with that. But here is the, the base setup that we, we are going to be using and the window setup as well. And um, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next lecture.